Okay, here we go, class. We ended with a, uh, an exploration in which we looked at polynomials with different combinations of positive and negative uh, coefficients. And we speculated about the uh, number of positive real roots that um, that polynomial will have, and we concluded with Descartes' rule of signs. Okay, so most people, if they teach this at all, they, they don't uh, give a proof uh, or even a motivation. I think we've given a very good motivation and understanding. Um, the proof is just kind of a longer, careful uh, accounting for for all the details, so I don't think it's worth doing. So let's just have it have this stated now. It's possible that you didn't uh, maybe understand exactly what we were talking about in class uh, at the end there. So uh, here it is, Descartes' rule of science. It says, there's a lot of words here, uh, for a polynomial P, okay, so with real coefficients. All right, so we're talking about uh, polynomials with real coefficients, so the normal kinds of polynomials. Uh, with the terms listed in descending order of degree, in other words, write the polynomial the normal way with the, uh, with the highest degree terms uh, at the beginning, uh, and then uh, keep going. Then, uh, says Descartes' rule of signs, the number of positive real roots, remember that that's um, uh, the whole uh, point uh, of this uh, exploration was to try to get a handle on how many positive real roots there are, is equal to, um, equal to the number of sign changes in the coefficient of p. But of course, that's not quite right, uh, because as we've seen, uh, even when there are two sign changes, there might not be two roots, because, uh, because it might kind of miss, uh, so to speak. So that's where this comes from, or less than that by an even number. Alright, this still might be a maybe confusing um, a uh, bunch of words, so let's do an example which um, references this and also uh, makes the connection between uh, uh, to, to what we were doing in class. Okay, so here we go. I have an uh, example polynomial. Uh, 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus x plus 2. And, well, okay, uh, what can I say about this polynomial? Well, uh, if I'm going to kind of talk this out in the same way that I was doing uh, in class. Now, we didn't do any examples with cubics, uh, at least on our big chart, but okay, the logic is still the same. Let's only look at the positive side of this function for a minute, um, and uh, let's, let's see what we, can, what we can figure out. Well, um, so, uh, okay, when x is 0, this polynomial has value 2. And now, uh, what will happen is, as x gets bigger, uh, looking at positive values of x only, this linear term is going to have the effect of increasing x, but this quadratic term is going to, to take over. And so one of two things is going to happen. Either uh, this uh, linear term is going to, to uh, increase the function up a little bit, and this quadratic term takes over and brings it down below the x-axis, causing a root. Uh, but then, of course, uh, finally, for, for sufficiently large x, the uh, cubic term will, will take over. Um, and so the end behavior is certainly going to be up at infinity. So it's possible that, that this is what happens, uh, causing there to be two uh, real roots, remember. Uh, two, then linear term makes it, uh, makes it bigger but then there's a sign change uh, to, to the next highest power term, the quadratic term, which makes it go down, and then the cubic term makes it go back up again. Uh, so it could look like that, or uh, what, what is maybe more likely in this situation uh, is that, and it depends on the coefficients, and there's no fast way to do this, it's, impo it's possible instead that the linear term makes it bigger, the quadratic term makes it go down, but then the cubic term kind of starts to dominate the quadratic term uh, before um, the, the, the quadratic term has dragged the function down again to the x-axis. So I conclude uh, from Descartes' um, uh, rule of signs that this polynomial has two or zero positive real roots. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll even just maybe just write that or something, right? Uh, so f, f has two or zero 
um, two or zero uh, positive real roots. Okay, and that might maybe not seem so so helpful actually, just as is. Um, but all right, that's that's what Descartes sign tells you. And if you want to kind of make a picture, maybe you can sort of just draw this kind of cloud of uncertainty or something like that. I think <coughs> that picture uh, accurately uh, captures this function, or, or sort of accurately, uh, which is to say we're going to have two roots or zero based on merely considering the sign changes. Okay, this is, this is basically what we did in class. Now, um, you might be thinking, okay, but uh, this entire lesson we focused only on the positive side of the graph. What about the negative side? So what about the number of negative real roots? Surely we care about negative real roots as well. We do. Uh, and, um, well, it was basically easier to, um, to, to focus on the positive half of the graph because if x is always positive, then, you know, the sign of the coefficient is determining the contribution. So we could, one thing we could do, I'm not going to do this, is go over the entire logic all over again, make a new gigantic uh, polynomial chart, uh, and considering um, the negative case, and sort of have two versions of, of Descartes' rule of signs, kind of one for the positive side and one for the negative side. All right, um, but uh, in actuality, we don't need to do that because um, what we really want to do is somehow look at what's going on over here. So I'm just going to sort of draw like a big, you know, flashlight or something. That's not what a flashlight looks like. But I'm going to draw a big kind of circle of, man, I wish I knew what was going on over here on the left side of this graph. And um, I, I want to know. Uh, and uh, you can think of Descartes' rule of signs as being a tool. It's a tool which tells you what's going on on the positive half of the graph. So if I have a theorem, uh, oh, I, I guess I should say, if you want to kind of ignore all of the, the deep thinking and, and, and discussion and picture drawing uh, and, and reason making that we did in class and just kind of blindly follow uh, Descartes' rule of signs, then here's what it says. You know, take a polynomial with real coefficients, list the terms in descending order of degree, and then just count the number of sign changes. And so this is going to be, this is positive, so we're still positive, so that's my first sign change. Uh, from positive to negative, and then I have another sign change from negative to positive. So that's the sense in which there are two sign changes, and Descartes' uh, rule of signs says that um, the number of positive real roots is equal to the number of sign changes, that would be two, or less than that by an even number. So it's, it's as we said, right, there are going to be two or zero positive real roots. Um, but right now, uh, I want to talk about the, the number of negative real roots, and it's like I have a tool for looking at the positive half of a graph, how can I like use that tool to look at the negative half of the graph? Ah, well, when you put it like that, I think I understand what to do. I kind of just want to take this whole function and just like flip it. So let me define a new function. Let me define a new function called g. What's g? Well, it's just f of negative x. And as you all know from, from pre-calc a, uh, f of negative x is just the graph of f but flipped over the x-axis. It's now when you plug in uh, positive numbers into G, then what you're, well, uh, okay, when you put positive numbers into G, uh, you're getting back uh, what F does on the negative side, and when you plug in negative numbers, you're getting back what F does to the positive version of that number, so everything is, is flipping across the, the y-axis. Okay, well, what is this, this G function uh, anyway? Uh, well, just simply plug in negative X into F. Okay, if you plug negative x into f, then you just get negative x cubed, so that becomes negative 5x cubed. But then um, when you square negative x, it's still just x squared, so that's minus 3x squared. And then this becomes a minus x uh, plus 2. Okay, so this is a perfectly uh, legitimate uh, polynomial. Uh, and what is this polynomial g? It's just f, but reflected over the y-axis. Well, now that I can, um, now that I have an explicit formula for this uh, function g, I can just see, well, okay, how many sign changes does g have? Well, g starts off, um, I guess I'll use purple, mm, g starts off uh, positive at a positive 2, and now what uh, contribution does this uh, negative uh, constant coefficient have? Well, it brings me down. The quadratic, down even more. Cubic, down even more. Okay, so using my entire um, infrastructure of, 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 of knowledge about how many positive real roots a function will have, 
I can say that this g function um, has, g has a one positive real root, guaranteed uh, that, that g will have one positive real root. But okay, what is g? g is just f flipped over the y-axis. So the positive half of g just is the negative half of f. And so I no longer uh, have to wonder what's going on here in the left-hand side. If I want to know what's happening to the negative numbers when plugged into f, I should simply ask what's happening to the positive numbers uh, when I plug them into to f of negative x. And so in that way, uh, we, can, we can adapt uh, Descartes' um, uh, rule of signs to uh, help us find negative roots as well. It's quite easy. And, uh, okay, so uh, now we can sort of summarize our information in, in a little sort of chart. Uh, and, and the chart goes like this. Um, well, how many positive uh, real roots does F have? How many negative real roots does F have? And then how many non-real roots does F have? And actually, we don't totally know yet, right? Because as we've seen from above, uh, one option is that there are two uh, positive uh, real roots. Uh, but another option is um, that, there are, that there aren't any. If there are two positive real roots, well then what I can guarantee because uh, that is that there is going to be one negative real root, that's what I saw. And, uh, okay, I guess I should maybe do this kind of in order, one at a time. One possibility is that there are two positive real roots. There's guaranteed to be one negative real root, and the fundamental theorem of algebra says that a cubic has three um, complex roots, so then there will be no non-real roots. But another option, and I just don't know which one it is, is that there are no positive real roots, one negative real root, and therefore, because there are three roots total, uh, and it's a cubic, uh, then the other two roots must be non-real. So this chart that I've produced uh, down here is the, uh, the summary of the sort of state of my knowledge about um, how many uh, roots F has of different types by applying Descartes' rule of signs uh, kind of twice. Once to the positive half of F, and once to the positive half of F of negative X. Okay, so that was, I think, pretty straightforward, uh, hopefully. Um, let's just do one more problem, and, and then we'll be done. Here we'll sort of do less talking, we'll just, we'll just do it. So negative 6x to the fourth is the function, plus 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Uh, okay, and uh, because um, we, we end up needing the same information every single time, what people will then often do is just immediately, uh, let's compute f of negative x, because, uh, so, so, so flip this function across the y-axis, well, if you do that, then you're going to get negative 6x to the fourth, uh, minus 3x cubed, minus 2x squared, minus 5x, minus 3. Uh, okay, and now let's just uh, talk it out. Uh, what's going on with this f function? Well, it starts off negative. Uh, then this linear term makes me go positive, so I sort of start shooting up towards the x-axis. But then the quadratic term takes over and sends me shooting back down again. So it's possible. Maybe I should draw this. Uh, but eventually we're going to stop the drawing and we're just going to sort of know the theorem. But yeah, we're down here at negative 3. Uh, the 5x term causes me to go up. Um, the negative 2x squared term causes me to go down. The 3x cubed term causes me to go up. And the negative 6x fourth term causes me to go down. But, uh, of course, I'm not really sure, so it's possible that my um, polynomial has four positive real roots, but it's also possible that instead of intersecting here, um, that the, that the, that it looks more like that, and it's also possible that instead of intersecting here, um, or any kind of combination of these, that it might look like that. So actually, when it comes time to, to saying how many positive, negative, and non-real roots there are, I really don't know. There might be four positive real roots, there might be only two, or there might be none at all. So this doesn't seem very helpful, but, um, when I now look at uh, the, the, the signs of f of negative x, I see that it's negative and then negative, 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 negative. Um, therefore, this, this f of negative x function is just negative over here all the while. 
Well, if the f of negative x function has no positive real roots, then that means our function has no negative uh, real roots. So actually, the, the sort of um, entire justification uh, for learning about Descartes' um, rule of signs, which we're, you know, devoting 45 minutes or something to, to, ex to exploring this theorem, is the power to look at a function like this uh, and in a basically, you know, 30 seconds of quick calculations to conclude that, in fact, this function cannot have any negative real roots. And uh, I should therefore never spend my time looking for, for negative uh, real roots because there just aren't any. And, uh, okay, this is a quartic with four real roots, so if it has four positive, with, sorry, with four, which has four complex roots, so if it has four positive real roots, then it has no non-real roots. If it has two positive real roots and no negative roots, then it has two non-real ones. And uh, if it has no positive or negative roots, which is a possibility, then, then it must have four non-real roots. So, so I, I, I still have a lot of uh, ignorance as to, as to uh, what's going on, but the one big important thing I learned, and I guess it's important, arguably helpful, is that this function has no negative real roots. And if you only takes like uh, 30 seconds to kind of check these little things until you can, you know, if you're searching for roots, you can, well, you can quickly see that there, that there are no negative real roots. Okay, that's how you use uh, Descartes' rule of signs. Uh, there's another quick 10 minute video uh, that I recorded last year uh, that you'll watch also. Uh, Alright, goodbye.